Springdale, Newfoundland, called on Green Bay. On this 25th day of July, the year of our Lord, 1997, 100 years after Springdale received its name, and 500 years after my good friend John Cabot discovered this wonderful island, I am pleased to announce the start of the Springdale Centennial Celebration. Let us now welcome two people who have truly experienced a part of our heritage, Harvey Rice and Gilbert Kennedy. Springdale 
who were participating in a reenactment of a trip taken by the Grants and other families from Springdale over a hundred years ago. The trek was a walk from Cornerbrook to Springdale. The city of Cornerbrook is very proud to be part of the Springdale Centennial celebrations, as well as sharing in a unique relationship with the town of Springdale. This, the year of the Cabot 500 celebrations, provides us all with the opportunity to reflect and celebrate our past and to look forward to a promising future. I think the one thing that stands out the most during these Cabot 500 celebrations is the camaraderie and respect that all Newfoundlanders have for each other. Newfoundlanders far and wide are coming home for the celebrations and inviting fellow Newfoundlanders to join in their own community celebrations. Thank you for inviting me to be part of your celebration. I have had an opportunity to review the Celebrating Our Heritage program schedule and I must compliment organizers for putting together what promises to be a truly entertaining show for all participants. Unfortunately, I will not be able to be present at your ceremonies. However, my sincere best wishes for a successful celebration. In closing, I hope everyone thoroughly enjoys the centennial celebrations and I would like to extend an invitation to you all to visit the beautiful city of Corner Brook. And he, uh, he ends with a, a personal note, handwritten. He says, this is special to me. My grandfather was George Gillard. My mom, his youngest daughter, is Evelyn. And it's uh, signed uh, Raymond A. Pollitt, Mayor, City of Corner Brook. Uh, now uh, Harvey is going to come and he has uh, a presentation from the Mayor of Corner Brook to the Mayor of Springdale. Gentlemen, and welcome to Springdale's 100th birthday. Will you rise with the Springdale Community Band to sing the Old to Newfoundland? Jennifer, 
and uh, a great job. Too bad they didn't have her in Bonavista. They would have had a town crier. We have some important people to uh, introduce to you. The patrons of our centennial year festivities. And we'd like you to acknowledge them if you would. First of all, over here to my right, Mrs. <coughs> Excuse me, Mrs. Pearl Clark is sitting right here. And she is, I think, just four years shy of her own centennial. And she is one of our patrons. Mrs. Clark is one of our patrons. Posthumously, the other patron is Mr. Harvey Grant, a man well known to many of us, loved and respected by all who knew him. He's represented here tonight by his three daughters, and we're really pleased to have them with us. First of all, Mrs. Flora Huckster, right here. If you, can you get up there? These are the patrons of our festivities this year, and Paula, I believe there is a presentation to be made to the patrons by Miss Centennial. So we'll pause for a moment and do that, in grateful recognition of their presence here and of agreeing to be patrons. Presentation to Mrs. Clark by Miss Centennial. And to Mrs. Huckster. To Mrs. Chapel. And to Mr. Sullivan. And again, thank you all for agreeing to be with us. I'd like to introduce to you uh, some of our stage guests this evening. Uh, we'll introduce them a little more fully when they bring greetings in a moment or two. But uh, I think most of you are familiar with these people. First of all, the Minister of Culture and Recreation, the Honorable Sandra Kelly. The MHA for our district, Graham Flight. Some of you may know the Mayor of Springdale, His Worship Don Buck. And the most nervous person in the house tonight, the Chair of the Centennial Celebrations Committee, Louise England. Some of us were hoping that Natasha Henstreet would be here. I was one of them. She, I have to say she's one of my favorite species. <laughs> Actually, I was offered a part of film at one time myself. I was offered the part of a man who had been married for 20 years. I turned it down because I said I wanted a speaking part. <laughs> and last but not least, right up there with all these important people are our two mascots, although I don't see them where are they? Spring and Dale. <laughs> you didn't have the gear on, but you take a bow. Spring and Dale, the two mascots. Now, for your entertainment this evening, I want to introduce to you the Springdale Community Band. You've already heard them. They're producing a really fine sound. The band was put together by Gloria Shepherd and Brian Hancock. Gloria, you'll notice, is directing the band, and Brian is playing trumpet. First trumpet? First trumpet? Look at that. Right back there. You should. They all see Gloria, Brian. They should see you as the other part of it. This band is made up of representatives from many different areas of our town. There are people here from Charisma, from Grant, from the Salvation Army Band, adults from all over. 
So we're really pleased with the togetherness of this group. And it shows what fine music can be made when people get together. We're going to ask them to do four numbers for us. They've been working really hard to do this. And the first one is called March of the Irish Guard. Now the March of the Irish Guard, interestingly enough, is based on an old English folk song written somewhere around 1290. So we're going back a ways. But there's a connection with Cabot, of course, here, because when John Cabot left for the New World on a second voyage with five ships, one of them bumped into Ireland and went down. <laughs> and we have no idea what happened to Cabot and the other four, because they've never heard tell of after. So on that light note, we will ask the community band to present us with the March of the Irish Guard. been voted several times as the favorite folk song of Newfoundlanders everywhere, certainly one of the most beautiful, and written by a dear old gentleman who's a friend of mine, in his 90s himself, had a letter from him just the other day, he's still building dories and writing books, Otto Kellen's Let Me Fish Off Cape St. Mary's.
Russell. You know, Otto told me he wrote that in 12 minutes, sitting at his kitchen table one night. It's amazing. Now, we're going to hear a number that says, lazy as a beautiful, warm summer's day like we had today. So let's drift along with Kokomo. Thank you. 
so great to see them together and to hear the kind of music they make. And I'm sure we all do appreciate it. It's now time to call on the fearless and stalwart editor of the Norwester, Mr. Randy Edison. And he has a special presentation that he doesn't trust me to tell you about. He wants to tell you about it himself. Randy? Robinson Blackmore Printing and Publishing and your community newspaper, the Norwester, is very honored to be a corporate sponsor of Springdale's Centennial Celebration. As part of our sponsorship, we have created the first annual Youth of the Year Award, which recognizes responsibility, leadership, and dedication of our youth within the community. With so many young people offering volunteer service, we realize the difficult task which lies ahead annually. Therefore, we depend on the in input of independent judges. Norma Huckster, Paula Parsons, and Shelley Russell are this year's nominees. All three girls are involved in church, community, and school activities, and have shown leadership and responsibility. The Norwester's first Youth of the Year is Paula Parsons. I'd like to call on Paula to accept the Youth of the Year Award. She'll also receive a copy of Robinson Blackmore Printing and Publishing's Cabot 500 Celebration Book set sail along with a commemorative sweatshirt as her prizes. I'd also like to call upon the, uh, the two runners up. They'll also receive copies of set sale as well as gift certificates from either Marie's restaurant or Caitlin's restaurant. So if both girls are around. judges, those who donated prizes, and to everyone who nominated these young ladies. We hope others will take time to nominate the many deserving young volunteers next year. On behalf of Robinson Blackmore Printing and Publishing and, Publishing and the Norwester, thank you very much for allowing us to be a part of this special celebration. Thank you. Thank you very much, Randy, and congratulations, Paula, and the others. This is a very good time, since at least 14 people have spoken to me, one way or another, to say, you've forgotten all about Miss Centennial and the runners-up. And no, I haven't. You look at those three young women back there and tell me how I could forget them. Someone my age. We're very pleased to have with us this evening on the stage, and we're spacing this out a little bit, of course, but you've already, already met Miss Centennial, Paula Parsons, and Paula, we'll ask you to stand and take another bow, would you please?
and the runners up, Melissa Locke and Tia No More. And you're going to hear a little more from them shortly. Seeing Gilbert Penny there a little while ago, I was reminded that this is the Huckster family reunion year. And I know Gilbert is awfully worried about this because <laughs> he's talked about it a lot. But evidently, Gilbert, there are over 450 Hucksters coming in town next week. Is that why you stick so close to Harvey Rice? <laughs> I didn't think there were that many Hucksters in the world. How many Hucksters are here tonight, by the way? Hands up. How many are there? Sadie, we all saw you. <laughs> oh, look, quite a few of them. Well, we're very pleased to see you. Even Gilbert will join us in welcoming all the Hucksters home and all the other people who are visiting Springdale and coming home to see family and loved ones. We're all so pleased to see you at this particular time. At this point, I would like to draw your attention to the back of your programs where you'll see listed some very important people because they help make all of this possible. These are the corporate sponsors of our celebrations. Kicks Radio, <coughs> Pepsi, who is represented here tonight by Mr. Art Sevier. Where's Mr. Sevier? Where is he? Oh, there you are. Mr. Art Sevier representing Pepsi. Uh, Charles R. Bell, Molson's, they make something or other. Uh, the town of Springdale, Cabot 500 Corporation and Robinson Blackmore Printing and Publishing, who are represented here tonight by Randy Edison and Trudy Randall. Where are they? Gone. Two at. Anyway, we are very grateful to these people for their financial contribution to this celebration, and we would ask you to acknowledge that. Now we are going to ask some people to bring us greetings from their respective constituencies. We are pleased to welcome back to Springdale the Honorable Sandra Kelly, Minister of Culture and Recreation. Most of you will remember that Sandra lived in Springdale for a year where she was a public health nurse and her husband was uh, a doctor here. She made life miserable for me, I have to tell you, during that time because I was chair of the hospital board and she was on my back all the time because we were allowing soft drink machines in the hospital. <laughs> Always, forever. And I do think she won. I'm not sure if there's one down there now or not. There's still one there? Aha! After I left. <laughs> After you left. Okay, anyway, I thought Sandra had been here for about three years. But actually... <laughs> Actually, it was only a year. In that year, she and Ron made a lot of friends, and we're very pleased to see them back. And we would ask her to bring us greetings now as uh, the Minister of Culture and Recreation. Sandra, you would? Ed still can't get it right. It's Tourism, Culture, and Recreation, Ed. I shouldn't start off by giving him a rough time. I'm not sure who I used to give the roughest time to, actually, Wayne Vinson, uh, Ed, or Dr. Evans. But uh, while I was here, there wasn't a Coke machine in the lobby or a Pepsi machine, but we did have them in other parts. It's just that I didn't want to be teaching how to eat healthy, and then everybody would go out and have a Coke and a Pepsi and not drink the milk we had at the prenatal classes. But I had an absolutely delightful year here in this community and many fond memories. As a matter of fact, it's rather sentimental for me this evening because my first son was born here in Springdale and was invited to these celebrations and thought he would be able to come, because of, but because of work commitments in Calgary, he had to cancel and couldn't come. I also, even in this building, had some great times. I've never been in the building in the summertime before and realized it could be warm. I used to watch my husband play hockey here, and I also played broom ball here myself and uh, probably still have the sore ribs every now and again that started uh, from doing that. 
but more than anything, I enjoyed being a nurse here all over this region, uh, taking the ferries out to the islands to do baby clinics, uh, working up in Triton and Brighton and all around Robert's Arm and over to Harry's Harbor and Kings Point. It was one of the best experiences of my life. I had just got out of university and I learned a lot here and some of it had to do with my job, but a lot of it had to do with the Women's Institute here. I learned how to weave while I was here. And to be truthful, I think my political life started here because while I was in the hospital having my first child, somehow or another I got elected to the executive of the WI and that was the first time I think that I was ever elected to anything. And I remember Mrs. Young teaching me how to make marmalade. So I did lots of things while I was here. I had a very special year and I've come back here often. And I'm really delighted to be here this evening in one of our province's most scenic regions to help kick off Springdale's centennial celebrations. 100 years of a town's history and heritage is indeed a reason to celebrate. It is certainly exciting and fitting to have your heritage celebrations during this province's special year of celebration, the 500th anniversary of John Cabot's arrival in this new found land. You have so much to celebrate here. I think from the point of my department, uh, tourism, this is certainly a tourism event. Uh, when you look at the recreation side of it, I think that Harvey and uh, Gilbert certainly showed that walking is a certain form of exercise and they've done it to the extreme. And I know that uh, in my department, that's one of the most important things we all know that healthy living goes with a lot with longevity. The culture side of it, the wonderful band here this evening certainly attests to that. Every time I hear Cape St. Mary's, I think I will always picture the Matthew arriving in Bonavista. It was one of the most special moments in this province's history, and every time that's played, I think many people will remember that. Like our province, Green Bay has a distinctive and vibrant history and culture. Throughout the centuries, Green Bay has been home to many peoples the Maritime Archaic Indians, the Paleo Eskimos, the Dorset, the Beothics, after whom your Beothic Trail was named, and later still the Micmac, all before the European settlers arrived. Springdale, too, is rich in history and heritage. From the time John Curtis first arrived here in 1870 and built his sawmill on Mill Island to the bustling service center for Green Bay that it is today, Springdale has not only survived but flourished throughout the past century. Its success was mostly due to the optimistic determination of your ancestors, their hard work, and their creative ability to use this area's natural resources. That spirit is in, inherent in you today as Springdale continues to prosper with the help of the area's rich logging and mining industries. There is so much tourism potential here also with this area's scenic beauty. The Green Bay Economic Development Association and the region's town councils have done much work over the years to develop that potential and I commend them for it. Throughout the next few days, your organizers, and I think you must have some exceptional organizers to have put together the agenda that's going to be happening here over the next week, and I have to commend Louise English and her committee. When I received all the literature and the brochures, I think you're in for a very exciting time, and I think the big number of people here this evening attest to the enthusiasm for all of this and the great organization. I congratulate all of those involved, especially your volunteers for their tremendous work in preparation for these centennial celebrations. As a regional Cabot event, government through the Cabot 500 anniversary celebrations is pleased to have been a partner in this event. Some of you have taken the Springdale centenni the centennial uh, celebrations as an opportunity to make it your come home year and you are visiting uh, relatives and old friends who you haven't seen for quite a while. Others are having family reunions. I understand that the Hucksters, I was staying at a bed and breakfast actually in Steadybrook the other week, and Mr. Huckster told me that there's 300 family members coming just for their reunion, and I'd like to welcome all of them home, and I'm certain you'll have a great stay here in this historic town. 
I was listening to CBC this morning, and I've been noting all the family reunions and seeing who is having the most. And I thought that the Abbots in Ragged Harbor were going to beat you, but they only have 298. They invited 314, they said, but only 298 have come, so you've upped them by two. To all of you from Springdale and the surrounding area, I welcome you to these Springdale Centennial celebrations. Enjoy the festivities and celebrating your heritage. To our guests who are visiting our province from abroad, I sincerely hope that you will participate in Cabot 500 celebrations here and in other parts of our province. Enjoy your stay here in Newfoundland and Labrador, and a very, very sincere thank you for inviting me back here. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Minister. Although we have a helicopter pad here and a little runway up the road here, it's not too often we get provincial flights. <laughs> I couldn't resist that at all. <laughs> We're pleased to welcome the MHA for our district. Uh, a provincial flight, if there ever was one, Mr. Graham's flight. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. You know, it's a, it's, it's, a, it's a blessing sometimes to have the name flight. In the job I have now, and I've had for the past 20 years, I've done a lot of flying on various flights, various airplanes. And it's, it's great to call up the airline company and say, look, I want to reserve a ticket from here to Toronto or wherever it might be. And they say, okay, sir, and then what's your name? And I say, flight. And they say, no, but we want to know your name. We know you're talking about a flight, but we want to know your name. And I say, it's flight. And so then I, then I end that by saying, that's pretty appropriate for someone who wants to fly today, isn't it? They agree. So, Mr. Chairman, it works sometimes. Ms. Minister, Mayor Butt, special platform guests, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, the Reverend Clergy that may be in the congregation or in the hall. I want to tell you I'm grateful for giving me the, for your giving me the chance to participate in this your opening of your centennial. It's interesting and it's obviously very pleasant for you that uh, when we are cel celebrating Newfoundland's 500th anniversary of the landing of Cabot, that Springdale would be celebrating its 100th anniversary. Springdale has been the center, the economic hub of the Green Bay area for 100 years. There must be a lot of pride experienced here in this room tonight and in the town of Springdale by both old and young. The older generations must take a great deal of pride in the contribution they've made to making Springdale what it is today. The younger generations see this as their heritage and they know that the flag has been passed and it's up to them to carry it forward. I'm delighted that the Minister of Tourism and Recreation is with us tonight. And I want to say to her that Springdale's economy over the past hundred years has been based largely on forestry, mining, and some fishing. And Ms. Minister, we as government say that we believe and we are going to make sure that tourism is going to play a major role in the economic development of Newfoundland and Labrador starting now. And I want to tell you, Ms. Minister, as you well know from living in Springdale, that there are very few areas in Newfoundland and Labrador that has more natural beauty and therefore more potential for, for, for tourism development than the Springdale area. You have the beautiful Owls Bay, you have Green Bay with all its beautiful bays and coves, three salmon rivers within beautiful, pristine, unpolluted salmon rivers within 15 minutes drive, and then there's the great hinterland behind Springdale. So as we enter into the next 100 years, we must make sure, Ms. Minister, that tourism plays a major role in the economic development of the Springdale area. No other part of Newfoundland has more to offer by way of natural assets for tourism development than the area that Springdale serves as its social, economic, and growth center. And therefore, no other area of Newfoundland is more deserving and should get more attention as Newfoundland develops its tourist potential over in the coming years, over the next hundred years. 
Now, in closing, Mr. Chairman, I want to do something that uh, say something to you that I know now I won't be upstaging anybody. But I had an experience today that I uh, that was uh, special to me. My wife Shirley and I were driving out over the highway, coming from the Trans Canada towards Springdale, and as we approached the Indian River Bridge. We saw these two people, these beraggled two people with walking sticks, right in the middle of the bridge, making their way across the bridge. And my wife, Shirley, being very uh, concerned about other people, Sir Graham, picked the poor things up <laughs> and gave them a ride. So as I got on the bridge, I was just lo and behold, and suddenly hit me, it's RV and Bert. Seriously, what a great gesture. What a great uh, thing to do. How timed relative to Springdale's centennial. Congratulations, Harvey and Bert. And now again, let, let me, uh, ladies and gentlemen, offer a vote of thanks and congratulations to what must be the dozens and dozens of sponsors and organizers who planned and worked to make this a reality tonight and to make sure that Springdale has got all the functions that we know and that I've seen in the agenda for next week. And let me congratulate Springdale on all it's accomplished this past hundred years. And I know that you and we are looking to the next hundred years with great confidence in Springdale and the Springdale area. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Grant. For a minute there, I thought we were in the House of Assembly. <laughs> I don't know if you have picked up Harvey and Bert or not. I think they've been up to Harvey's house for the last three days. So, <laughs> <laughs> so I it now gives me pleasure to welcome our fearless leader to the stage. And because I know it makes him very uncomfortable, I would like to introduce him as His Worship, <laughs> Mayor Don Butt. Yes, patrons, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, especially a big welcome to all those people visiting, former residents especially. It's a great pleasure for me to be here tonight on behalf of the citizens of Springdale to bring you greetings and best wishes on this 10-day event. The problem with speaking third in free politicians is by the time you get up, everything has been said, especially speaking to our grand fleet. So my speech basically has been said by Sandra Kelly, who was the former mayor, and Grant Clayton, who was the former deputy mayor. So the theme of celebrating our heritage is certainly apt to what we're doing today. And I look at it as not only celebrating our heritage, but also looking forward to our future. As you all know, and I think uh, the politicians in the audience certainly are aware of the turmoil troubles that rural Newfoundland is going through. Springdale has weathered many a storm back in the 60s and the early 70s. Our demise was predicted by a lot of people because of the closure of the three mines that were in the immediate area. We weathered that storm because of a lot of foresight by our forefathers and a lot of hard work by our citizens. And I think right now we're going through some troubled times, but I think with the help of all community leaders, every citizen in this town, I think we have a great future. Springdale is still a great place to raise a family, also a great place to retire. We have a lot of things in a small community, there are a lot of big communities only envious of. So I think even though we're going through some times that are really tough, that we have a great future. We also uh, are looking forward to meeting a lot of former residents of Springdale who have come back to visit and take part in our celebrations. I've met a lot of people in the last couple of days, some people that I haven't seen in 20, 30 years. And the amazing thing about it, most of those people have gotten older, they look different, but I'm still the same. There's something about this town, I guess. I, I also made a commitment Speaking of Harvey's and Bert's trek, and I think it was a great gesture on their behalf, and I think they deserve all the accolades that have been passed on to them tonight. I made a commitment that 
on the 200th anniversary of Spring Hill's <laughs> celebration, I'm going to make the same trek. <laughs> I think my most important role here tonight as mayor of this town, representing our councillors and all the citizens, is to thank the organizing committee under the leadership of Louise England, all the volunteers, organizations, and everybody that had any part in organi excuse me, organizing this great celebration. The only thing left right now is for your participation. And judging from what we have here tonight, I think we're going to have a great 10 days. So again, thank you very much for the invitation. I look forward to meeting almost all people that are back visiting and have a great celebration. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Don. Uh, I love making jokes with people and about people and so on, but I can't do it with this next lady because the effort that's been put into these celebrations by Louise and her committee and all the workers, staff, everyone involved is just tremendous, as has been noted several times here already this evening. So when you welcome Louise to the podium for uh, a few words, would you also please recognize the amount of effort she and all the others have put into this this evening? Minister Sandra Kelly, MHA Grand Flight, Mayor Don Bott, patrons, special guests, family and friends. If it was all said before Mayor Bott spoke, it's certainly now all said after he spoke. On behalf of the Springfield Centennial Celebrations Committee, I want to welcome you all to our opening ceremonies. I especially want to welcome Gilbert and Harvey a safe return. I thought about you many, many days. All the rain we had, I'd say, poor Gilbert and Harvey. All the flies, the few flies, poor Gilbert and Harvey. <laughs> but you're back safe and sound. Yeah, right. To the community band, what a beautiful job you did tonight. To Gloria and Brian and all the volunteers in the band, it was superb. I thank you for taking time out and doing that for us tonight. Without all the many volunteers and service groups, the next 10 days would not have been possible. It is the many, many volunteers that make Springdale, especially, a strong and dynamic community. It's our citizens who care enough to help others and to work together toward a common goal that benefits all of us. Without a doubt, volunteers are the heart and soul of our community. Volunteers who get actively involved, volunteers who take time from their busy schedules, and volunteers that keep our community healthy. We only have to look around over the next 10 days to see just how healthy, strong, and dynamic we are. To everyone who helped, and there are a great many, I can't name them all, over the past two years, the committee would like to thank you. Yes, we're celebrating the 500th anniversary of John Cabot's landfall to Newfoundland, but also the 100th anniversary of the naming of our beautiful town. It's a time to relax and enjoy the company of family and friends. Springfield Centennial Celebrations Committee has put together a full 10-day schedule. Let's take part, let's make these celebrations in 97, something that we will remember for the next 500 years. Thank you. Thank you very much, Louise. I'd like to recognize, too, the uh, presence of Springdale Community Television. Brother Lauren there on the camera, very important part of our town, and it's nice to see you here making a record of all this for posterity, Lord. Now, let's have some more entertainment. Uh, unfortunately, Sharon Dove is ill and can't be with us this evening, so we have two melodious voices instead of three, and then some uh, humor talent. We're blessed with a great deal of talent in this area, especially among our young people. 
so much of it. We see it all the time around us in many different ways. And Melissa Locke is not the least of all that talent. As you know, she's one of the runners up in the Miss Centennial thing, and she's going to sing for us now. Melissa, when you're ready. Sunday morning in church, and sometimes we're doubly blessed and we get to hear her sing as well. 
Would you welcome a young woman of many talents, Miss Centennial, the winner of the you know, Wester Award, Miss Paula Parsons. While I'm waiting for my compliments, I just want to say welcome to everybody here tonight. I hope you have an exciting and fun-filled week this week coming up, as I'm sure it will be. But now that I have the chance, on behalf of myself and the two runners-up, Tia, Melissa, and of course all the girls that were involved in the pageant, I'd like to say thank you to everyone who helped organize the pageant. We had a lot of fun preparing for it. The night went extremely well, and I'd just like to say thank you for all your hard work and dedication. that roll and churn. How will they live their lives now, spending each day in despair? When will the heartache ever end, and the pain become easier to bear? taken away Just hope that you'll go back to that rugged shore Hope and think and pray How will they live their lives now Spending each day in despair When will the heartache ever end And the pain become easier to bear. The old men tell stories to the little ones of the way it used to be. When they would rise in the early morn to sail the beckon and sea. When will the heartache ever end and the pain become easier to bear? How will they live their lives now, spending each day in despair? When will the heartache ever end and the pain become easier to bear?
this a man thing with you people or what? <laughs> anyway, our compliments to the singer and to the song. Both very beautiful. Now we're going to change pace a little bit. I welcome that man about town. <clears throat> Man about the world, man of whom many comments are made, most of them true. We want to welcome our very own Ned. Celebration, eh? Oh yes, how do you fix this? This one, the uh, modern ones, eh? I'm used, to, I'm just used to the old one, the old hand in the end, eh? But I got the uh, get me guitar plugged in now to that little box down there. Oh yeah, I got a pickup into this guitar, eh? Most people have pickups out in the driveway, but I have one into me guitar, eh? And uh, makes her sound perfect, eh? And uh, I'm gonna plug her in that little box down there now. Oh, this is my son. <laughs> I don't want to give you too much doom, my son, because uh, I know there's a lot of pressure being MC, eh? And uh, help me get this straight on that. <laughs> my son, the cords are lying here. This is wicked. Anyway, uh, I'd like to welcome the crowd on from the main land. Who's here from the mainland anyway, boys? Put me in if you're from the mainland. Who's on from the mainland? Yes, nice too. Who's on from, uh, like, who's uh, who's uh, from here out of town? Like, not, don't be lying in Springdale. Like, you used to be lying here, but you're back now just for a few days. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's not bad. We got a fine crew on here tonight. Uh, I'll tell you something now. Newfoundland, uh, a lot of things we like to talk about, eh? Politics. We love talking about politics. And, uh, and religion, we get some of a bit of that. But the uh, politics, see, boy, you got to be good to be in the politics. Oh, yes, my sonny man. You got to be able to answer questions without answering them, eh? Oh, yes. Guaranteed. <laughs> see, they're not going to answer that, you know. They're not going to tell the truth there. But I was looking at that. I tell you, a master at doing that, and that's Brian Holman. You watching on to the news. I was watching on the news the other night, eh? There a little while ago when the budget come down, eh? So buddy asked them, you know, what do we think of the budget and all that, right? And like, you know, you ask someone like a normal person, normal human being like myself, and I'd say, well, boy, it's a fairly decent budget, or, you know, or, or the pitch or something like that, eh? But you listen to Brian Tobin, oh, man? Oh, it's a, it's a very... Uh, uh, it'll stabilize the economy for the next two or three months and uh, this factor and that factor and we'll just hold on and we'll wait and see. But he uses so many words, eh? And all he means is like, uh, I don't know, that's what he means. <laughs> Basically. Where are I'm concerned. Let's be quiet, let's be But he's a master at it, old man. We got some, oh my son, I'm so proud of him when he goes up onto the mainland, eh? Like, uh, you know, but the one thing I can't understand now, uh, like, I was thinking about writing a song. I know it's a place where the fishermen gather out on the east coast in their Portuguese boats. Because that's what's out there. All the Portuguese, eh? Oh, yes, and you wonder why the fish is all gone. But uh, he was a hero there a little while ago before you come our premier, eh? He was a big hero eh? uh, with them Spaniards and all that. But I don't know what kind of a state we're into now these days. And. Uh, the Queen was there, right? You see the Queen? Who saw the Queen? Who actually laid eyes upon the Queen Elizabeth? Who laid their eyes upon the Queen? You seen the Queen in it? And Brian Tobin even touched her. <laughs> well, sir. Well, sir. But he made some racket over that, though, man. I couldn't believe that. 
I mean, here's Brian. I mean, you know, he's trying to help the, the nice lady up over the stairs, eh? I mean, anybody, I would have done that. <laughs> yes, sir. I mean, you know, the, the sticks in the Federation building must have never wicked. I mean, there's about 30 sticks there, isn't there? Oh, yes. Make no wonder uh, Graham's there in such good shape. There is one back in court there every day. Good place for uh, Gilbert and uh, Harry. Walk back in court to Federation building stamp. But uh, uh, Gilbert, boy, you're looking pretty good. Not bad. I like that little bit of scruff you got on there. You get it gray at all. I can't get mine go gray at all. <laughs> no, sir. But you know, under that, under that body is an athletic physique. <laughs> Guaranteed. I mean, I like to see you fellas now carry on that backpack. There are 50 pounds in that. 50 pounds or more, isn't it? Oh, yes, sir. Oh, yeah, I see you fellas walking along. There you are. I said, I don't bother to pick, uh, pick that clit off. <laughs> I didn't even know who they were, but uh, I was coming along in my boat, eh? <laughs> oh yeah, I was coming along in my boat, oh, boat you up. Smacked up in his damn butt gas barriers. <laughs> oh yes, I, I don't know when, uh, when's he going to move that, old man? You ever got that gas bar move yet? And I beat up the boat every time. Every time I comes around here to Green Bay, I beat up the boat. Now boys, I got the songs wrote, eh? And, uh, uh, oh, I, have, I got a phone cabinet up here. But listen, now, uh, I was noticing the, the Honorable uh, Sandra Kelly there, talking about, like, uh, different places in Newfoundland, you know? Well, like, uh, like I was thinking, if, you, if you're in Springdale, uh, we go to, uh, we want to go into Grand Falls, right? But if you want to go to Buckins, you go into Badger to get up to Buckins, right? <laughs> That's right, isn't it? You goes up Buckingham, don't you? But you goes in Badger, right? <laughs> but from here, if you're in Springdale, you goes over the corner brook, don't you? <laughs> I think you do, don't you? Don't you go over the corner brook? But you goes in Grand Park. <laughs> but like, uh, but in order to get up the Buckingham, you got to go in the Badger, right? <laughs> That's right, isn't it? But like, uh, I think that uh, San Kelly should address this. We got a major problem here on the island because that. Uh, like, if you were going in the same, uh, let me see now, if I was leaving Springdale on our day, and I wanted to go to St. John's, well, I'd go to St. John's, right? But when you get, when you hit Clarenville, by the time you get to Clarenville, you're going in St. John's. <laughs> That's true, because the crowd in Clarenville, they goes in town, don't they? That's what that crowd calls it. Oh, yeah, I've been out to Clarenville, and, and they says, we're going in town now, and we're talking about St. John's. But here we are, out here, or wherever we are, and we want to go out to St. John's, we go so far on Transcanada Highway, we hit Clarenville, and then next thing you know, we're going in St. John's. <laughs> and like, this same thing like going over to Deer Lake. Or you're going, I suppose, yeah, you go over to Deer Lake, don't you? You go over to Deer Lake, don't you? <laughs> yeah, you go over to Deer Lake. I'll carry them there, see? And like, if you want to get down to St. Anthony, you gotta go up coast. <laughs> oh, yes, you have. Or you won't get there if you don't go up coast. <laughs> no, sir, you won't get to St. Anthony if you don't go up coast. But you're going down to Anthony, right? <laughs> and then you go, uh, where do you go? Uh, where do you go to Labrador? You go down on the Labrador, yeah, down on Labrador. But you still gotta go up the coast in order to get down on Labrador, too. <laughs> but you can't get that ferry now, eh? You seen the news, did you? Oh yeah, that old, the, the, the boat over there blew up and blew up the wharf and everything, eh? Oh yeah, you can't go that way no more. You gotta come, I don't know which way you gotta go now, but I'm all, uh, I'm all shagged up now. Because I'm worried about the mainlanders that's coming home, see? Sandra, I'm worried about mainlanders that's coming home, eh? Like, they don't know where to go in Newfoundland. Because everything is all shaked up, see? Because directions is all, uh, you know. So what we need to do, as soon as it's port of bass now off the ferry, what you need is this sign, eh? And uh, you need the arrow pointing up, more across, more over, and more down. And the great big sign says, all card and where you want to go, uh, uh, you goes in here or out there or over there or down across the arm or over across the neck. Well, it's, it's going to be one old just size of a sign there when you come off the ferry. Oh, yeah. So I'm going to leave that with you. So you bring that in Brian Tobin. Now, tell him I'm not concerned about the, the crowd coming over from the mainland because we don't know. We don't know where we're going. We don't know how to get where we're going. But it's a funny thing. We always, we always land in the right spot, don't we? Oh, yes. Now, I got uh, tons of songs here, boys. I got a song here I wrote now, a uh, song for the centennial year, eh? Now, some people haven't heard this one, but some people have. And I was afraid maybe I shouldn't sing it, but I was just thinking. 
We heard that one made Let Me Fish Out of King St. Mary's about 5,000 times. <laughs> so why not listen to this one again, eh? Not that big. So I'm gonna go sound there, Sherman, buddy. Now this one. Now this one, uh, this song is about the uh, spring, you know, this one is. And if you want a copy of this one, you can either, uh, you can buy it at your book down for $3, he's in there. Or you can send me 20 and I'll photocopy for it. <laughs> you like to do that, book yourself, eh? Cause I mean, everybody's making money on this John Cabot thing, eh? Oh yes, everybody's making money on it. Oh yes. I wish I'd come up with that idea with them caps there, that young fella got on there. Boy, they're some cute. But you can't beat this one, eh? And uh, I couldn't believe it, boy. Uh, I was thinking about uh, Gilbert and them, uh, Gilbert and Harry there out in the rain, eh? We had some vicious rain the other day, didn't we? Was you fellas out in there? Yeah. Did you have something on like I got on there? Just this. Well, so what's wrong with you, man? This, look, this here is the perfect rig. It's dressy. Because uh, you dress it up, eh, with this tartan toy, eh? I always wear tartan toy with, uh, to uh, represent Newfoundland, eh? I got a nice knot into that one, too, look. Oh, yeah, I got a nice knot into that. That's not the Windsor knot now. The old fella toys the Windsor knot, I think. This one here is modern one, eh? A 90s knot or something. But anyway, see, uh, Gilbert, you can dress right up in this, eh? Well, you can wear this Churchill man if you want to. Or you can wear it for big celebrations like this, see, because it matches. And it's cool. Oh, yeah, perfect. Now, this is me sign now. Listen to a story about a man named Ned. A newfie fisherman trying to keep himself fed. Then one day the fish is all gone. That comes straight from the mouth of a Crosby named John. You all remember that, don't you? Remember Tom Fisherman tried to beat down the door? I seen that on the news. Well, anyway. So Ned got aboard a boat to sail out the bay. He was going to take a trade and work at Ibernia someday. But the wind began to blow, and it was quite a gale. It smacked the boat against the wharf in the town of Springdale. Don Buck didn't have a gas bar then, eh? Here we go, first trip. Now Ned was feeling hungry, and it was getting dark, so he dodged up the road and met a feller named George Clark. Now George and his brothers were in the building boats. They told Ned to stick around, and they put his back afloat. Good crowd they are, boy. Here we go now. While he was waiting, he flicked into a store. He come to find out it was owned by George War. George said, stay a while. Ned said, boy, I can't. Then in through the door walked. Mayor Harvey Grant. There's a dollar down there. Can you remember that now? Can you mind it when your father come in the store and met me? I suppose you wouldn't remember me now. I oh, had this suit though. Same one. You can't, you can't they forget it. Anyway, Mayor Grant said, boys, we need to help an end. That's why I'm looking for every able-bodied man. There's all kinds of strangers here. I think they're going to stay. Cause I just seen their houses floating in the bay. How many can remember that now? Who can remember that? Who can remember houses floating in the bay? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. There's houses here in spring now. Now it comes from, from, from the places, eh? Anyway, verse uh, 6, I believe it is. Many years have passed and our town has really grown. The hub of the Green Bay is how we are known. We really made deadlines back in 78 when we cared for the whales and helped them to escape. Now, who remember that? Who remember that? Yeah, more hands showing now, see? Younger generation, eh? Okay, last verse now. Now, here we are in August 1997, and our lovely little town is a little piece of heaven. I hope you have a great time at the centennial year. And if you're going to drink and drive, drink uh, Pepsi instead of beer. Down, eh? I had coke down, eh? Well, I, I couldn't say coke because the uh, body was sitting there, eh? <laughs> but it, it, even here tonight, I would have probably said coke, eh? But then again, it would be pretty, it'd be critical to come in with a can of Pepsi in your hand and go promoting coke, eh? So I can't go at that stuff. Too much of that going on now. And uh, now, look, uh, something else about Newfoundlanders. Now, uh, Newfoundlanders, like, uh, sometimes we don't know to, we don't feel that great about ourselves sometimes, eh? Like, sometimes we have a, uh, what should I say, a negative way of talking? Like, for instance, 
You picks a gallon of berries. Ain't eh? remember years ago we used to go picking blueberries and go around night and door selling them? I used to sell them ice cream tops for a quarter, eh? Oh yeah, 24 cents back then. But now, like, we goes up and knocks on door. You don't want to buy no blueberries, do you? <laughs> <laughs> or, uh, so you might come up to someone and say, uh, you don't know nobody wants nothing done for them, do you? <laughs> you know, you, you hear people talking like that, eh? You, you don't want your car fixed, do you, buddy? You don't want to buy this Centennial magazine, do you? Yes, boy, oh boy, you never know. Like, you know, we got to try to change our uh, way of talking sometimes, eh? Oh, yeah, that's how we get on sometimes. But, uh, boys, I seen them at you. Oh, yes, sir. I seen them at you. Just like the court, that is. Oh, my sonny man. Little tiny old thing. I couldn't believe they come across in her. I went in St. John's seen her, eh? Oh, yeah, I went in seen the fireworks and everything in there, eh? Lots of fog in there. Oh, yes, all kinds of fog in St. John's. I don't know how the I don't know how you fellas ever lived in there. I don't know how they live in St. John's. I was in there the other day in my boat, and, and my son, before you know it, the fog was all around me. I, I couldn't even get the, you couldn't see where you was going, eh? I had made lights on and everything, never seen a thing. <laughs> never seen a thing, went down on the water sort of banging into people and everything. Oh, yes, and I tried to get on the mat, you. And my son, you had to line up there about two or three hours to get, to get on that Matthew. And they wouldn't even let you downstairs look inside there. Oh, no. You just had to walk around on deck. Come on, hurry along, hurry along, get off again. But it's a lovely boat. Oh, my son, if you get the chance to see her, you've got to go and see her. She's coming down to see now, little boy, eh? Oh, she's a beaut. She's a beaut by whoever designed her. Well, I certainly I suppose with John Cabot designed her. I don't know. But uh, she's a beautiful boat. Now, we've got another song here. Now, uh, this one's called 500 Years Ago. And this one is about, uh, well, obviously it's not about Springdale, but it's about John Cabot, okay? You might recognize this tune. Come gather all around me and I'll tell you a tale. But it's not about the boys who almost went to jail. It's about our lovely province and how we got our name. You might not all agree, but listen just the same. Well, they tell me of a boat to sail across the sea. The Matthew was her name, the lovely boat was she. In 1497, she left her English shore. From what I've been told, it was a three-hour tour. A three-hour tour. <laughs> the weather started getting rough, that lovely ship was tossed. If not for the courage of the fearless crew, the Matthew would be lost. The Matthew would be lost. Gracious, how in the world did get in there? <laughs> Who was the skipper, I wonder? Who was the first mate? Anyway, we find that out now. Okay, back to the back to the drawing board. The captain was John Cabot, a man from Italy. Thank God he changed his name from Caboto Giovanni. <laughs> The best kind of feller, he was just the same. But here in Newfoundland, we can't pronounce his name. <laughs> That's a wicked name, though, boy. Why do you need a name like Huckster or something like that? I mean, anybody can say that, right? Anyway, or Floyd. Anyway. He sailed across the Atlantic by order of the king. The crowds waved goodbye, you could hear the church bells ring. John was all excited, he wrote in his captain's log, but he sure got the start when he hit the East Coast log. Wicked, boy, wicked. Anyway, he couldn't see where he was going, he called up on his crew. But neither one of them quite knew what to do. John shouted, all are steady, and we will be all right. When they finally hit some land, he cried, oh, happy sight. Nice tune, isn't it? Here we go, now, almost finished now. Whoops, here we go. Well, he crawled up on the rocks and took a look around. He got his British flag and stuck it in the ground. The next thing you know, he was shaking someone's hand. Welcome to our province, sir, we call it Newfoundland. <laughs> Now John was good and hungry, and so was all his crew. So the strangers gave him lunch, tea and fish and brews. I was there so I should know, but I really don't want to boast. But I can tell you this, John Cabot ain't the most. Oh, yes, sir. Yep. That's about
shoot the soldiers. According to the history books, he walked up on the land, there was a fire burning there. Oh, yes, sir. So you can think what you like. I don't care if you believe the song or not, but someone was there. Oh, definitely. Someone was there. Someone lit that fire. And uh, I suppose it was to be addicts, you know. But that's, uh, that's another story in itself. I suppose that's another song there. But, like, uh, I was there, so I should know. Oh, I've been on the go for years, my son. Years. But now I got to go again now because there's other towns having Centennial Celebration Day. And besides, someone got to answer that phone, so I better... Uh, <laughs> I got to get going, eh? But uh, I'd like to thank you for all coming out tonight, and uh, I hope you have a great time at this centennial year. And there's people got anniversaries this month too, isn't there? How many people got anniversary, like wedding anniversary? I believe it's all kinds of people with wedding anniversaries. Anybody here got a wedding anniversary? Oh yes, people got wedding anniversaries in July, so you just go celebrate. Go see my friend now. Tell you about my friend now before he goes, eh? He had this girlfriend, eh? And uh, he was all excited because he was celebrating his anniversary with her. He's going out with her a year now. And uh, I said, uh, George, but what's her name? What's your girlfriend's name? He said, Bureau. I said, what? Bureau. I said, it can't be Bureau, old man. Beulah. No, he said, Bureau. I said, it can't be Bureau. I said, there's no woman named Bureau. I said, it got to be Beulah. He said, no, sir, it's Bureau. And I said, George, look. I said, a Bureau is about that wide and you got drawers. And he said, yeah, that's her. <laughs> Well, that's it, boys. Uh, so anyway, I get to go on now. I got to get me boat fixed, and uh, I might have to take up Georgie or something like that to get her fixed, eh? Because she beat up pretty bad, eh? But one thing never gets beat up, and that's me get out, eh? Not a hook into her. Not a scratch onto her, buddy. So uh, I'm going to go on now, eh? So thanks for rolling on to me pips, eh? I had to come in and make an adver advertisement for that, and I was afraid I might get the choked up up there, eh? Especially with that nice flame going. The heat that, that's thrown off. Must have some heat come from there. No, <laughs> it's only me. Some heat come from there. Well, I'm going to go on. I got down and me get air from that little box there. I hope we don't explode or nothing like that. Hold on that for a minute, eh? <laughs> <laughs> So, uh, congratulations on your centennial. And uh, what are you all doing now, anyway? Nothing, mate. You're going to close her off now. Wouldn't we get you, man? Come on, I'd like to take you right here. I'd like to shake you in the middle and say, do something with your hand. God bless you. Okay, we'll see you later. One thing I would like to know is his last name. <laughs> Penny or Huckster, I'm sure, but I'm not sure which. Anyway, uh, moving right along because we got a boat parade of lights coming up and it should be dark by now. 9.30, I believe, is the boat parade of lights, isn't it? And then at 10 p.m. there's a street dance. And that's in Hewlett's parking lot, which means it's not a street dance, it's a parking lot dance. <laughs> and at 11 p.m. there's going to be fireworks. Town Council is going to have a meeting. <laughs> Sorry, people, it was there and it had to come out. <laughs> anyway, uh, now I'm going to ask the Minister of Tourism, Culture, and recreation. <laughs> and you'll notice your colleague forgot the culture part when he said it. <laughs> to come forward and declare this officially open, and then we just have a couple of more brief things to do, but they're important before you leave. I think we should ask uh, Spring and Dale to come up here. <laughs> come on. I think that's a great idea. <laughs> <laughs> Over here. On behalf of Spring and Dale, I declare this uh, 100th celebration officially open. Have a great time, everybody.
And now, before we ask the band to lead us in O Canada, this is our birthday, it's our party, I'm going to ask the two runners-up and Miss Centennial to come here at the microphone and lead us all in the singing of, guess what? Happy birthday to Springdale. Ladies, <coughs> and you people have got to sing. When you're ready, who's going to hit on the key? You are. <laughs> Hurry up. Okay. Yeah, you Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, dear Springdale. Happy birthday to you. Very good. Thank you. So please, everybody, take in all the uh, activities. Have a wonderful week. Let's make it a time to remember. Let's make it a real good party. And thank you all for coming out this evening. Will you rise for the singing of O Canada?